Let's take our Bibles as this morning we turn to Psalm 103 as we continue to think on this little series in uncertain times. And today we get to that joy of remembering that in uncertain times, do not forget the blessings of God. And the blessings of God are myriad and they're all around us. His faithfulness, as we've thought already today, is uh, unending. It's there forever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and we rejoice in that. So Psalm 103, this is God's word this morning. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord. Let's pray and then we'll think of his word together. Lord, what we know not, would you teach us? What we have not, would you give us and what we are not would you make us for your glory and for jesus sake amen you ever get forgetful perhaps you remember the story about the elderly husband and wife who were both just a little bit hungry and the husband said he was going to get himself something uh, to eat and asked his wife if she would like uh, something I think I'd like some ice cream with chocolate sauce and a glass of milk, she said. And you better write it down or you'll forget, she said to him. I'll remember, he said. She shook her head. And before long, he came back and presented her with scrambled eggs, sausage and a glass of milk. And she looked at him with disgust and she said to him, you forgot my toast. And we laugh and we giggle at them. And we smile at ourselves because we've all just remembered moments when we've just uh, done the same uh, times we've forgotten something. And maybe it was just something silly, but maybe it was something more serious. Do you ever get forgetful? So lost in a moment or a situation that you forget the most important things? Do you ever get lost in a problem and forget about God? I'm amazed at the number of people I counsel who get so lost in a problem and a situation that their eyes are on everything bar the Lord. They forget the one who made them and knows them, loves them. They forget to pray and to praise. They simply feel all down and sad and low and depressed. And my encouragement to them always is to lift their head, to stop looking down and to look up, to stop looking within and to start looking around and to see what God is doing. To be reminded that he is there and he is at work. To be encouraged that he holds us fast and leads us on. And boy, do we need that encouragement in these days. In these days of lockdown, 
I've been stuck at home, isolated from the family, kept apart from friends every day, feeling like the one before, feeling frustrated now even. And in all of that, we keep thinking of ourselves and how hard and awful and boring this all is. And for some reason, we forget about God. We forget his goodness. We forget his grace. We forget his generosity. We forget simply that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. David the psalmist is in that place. David calls upon his soul to remember what the Lord has done. He wants to stir up the inner man and get him and get him excited about what he has in God and what the Lord has promised to do for him and in him and through him. We see him calling upon his soul to do two things here in the psalm. To praise the Lord and to ponder the Lord and what he has done. And the message today is simple for us. In uncertain times, do not forget the blessings of God. In all that's going on, do not get so lost in yourself and in your situation. Do not get lost in hopelessness and fear. Think of God. Praise his name. Ponder all that he has done for you in days past and in the present. And be reminded that he will do so much more in the days to come. Friends, would you look to the Lord today? David begins this psalm by, uh, by saying, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. David is attempting to stir himself up to praise. He's stirring up that inner man within him to praise and to thank God. Perhaps he's in a difficult place at this junction in time. Perhaps he's feeling weary from the battle. Perhaps he's tired of life. His bones are aching, his mind wandering. Everything about him is slowing down. And feeling down, his praise and thanksgiving isn't as vocal as it once was. And he knows he's in a spiritual slumber. And so he tries to stir himself up to praise and to thank. And he does this by pondering the Lord and all that he has done. Verse 2, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget all his benefits. Forget not. He then lists a number of things. And I'm going to mention seven, but you may be drawn to think on more today as you read this psalm through for yourself. He starts in verse 3 with our sin and our wrongdoing. Who forgives all our sins. Blessing number one. As a sinner, he forgives me. Our greatest need tops David's list here. We're sinners. Right from the moment we were born, we entered a world of sin. Temptation is all around us. Thoughts of self and selfishness consume us. Like Adam and Eve, we have a desire for more and that enthusiasm to do what we're commanded not to do. Isn't it funny that we live by that adage, rules are for breaking? David here reminds me of the very fact that I am a sinner and I have sinned. And then he encourages me with the glorious truth that as a sinner, God forgives me. We go on to learn in verses 8 through 14 of this psalm that the Lord is uh, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He doesn't treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. He forgives us. He takes our sin away from us. He remembers it no more. I am a sinner saved by grace. How can I forget that? Blessing number two. As a sick person, he heals me. It says that he heals all my diseases. These bodies we wear are often afflicted with sickness and disease. But this verse is not simply referring to physical healing. It's not always God's will to heal his people from their physical afflictions, regardless of what some of those preachers you might listen to say. He is referring to the sickness of the soul here. Our souls are subject to terrible maladies. Among them are lust, hate, greed, jealousy, discouragement, depression, anger, fear, guilt, and doubt, just to name a few and just as surely as diseases of the body can take away physical life, the diseases of the souls can deaden us towards the very things of God and leave us lifeless and weak. Our God is the great physician. He heals our diseases. 
We pray for God to heal our sickness and he often does. We ask him to heal those diseases that afflict our soul and he works to transform our lives. As a sick person, he heals me. How can I forget that? Then we're reminded that as a slave, he redeems me. Number three, verse four, who redeems your life from the pit. Why did I use the term slave and not sinner? Because we're slaves to sin. Sin binds us up in chains from which we cannot break free. We're imprisoned by our dark, our sinfulness, the darkness that comes. And David reminds us that God breaks into that dark dungeon and he breaks the chains. He sets us free. Redemption, of course, speaks of, of a price being paid or of something being offered in exchange for our freedom. So we're reminded that Jesus took our place. He paid the price we could not pay. He redeemed us from sin and allowed us to be reconciled with our Father in heaven. We are free from sin, free from the guilt of it, free from the penalty of it. As a slave, he redeems me. How on earth can I forget that? Blessing number four is indeed an undeserved joy for us. As a son, he crowns me. It says that he crowns you with love and compassion. Forgiven, healed and redeemed. We are now adopted into God's family. We are heirs with Christ. We've received the full rights of sons as we read read in Ephesians 1 a few weeks ago. Our Father in heaven crowns us as his sons and daughters. He blesses us with love and compassion. He loves us. He has compassion on us. This is God's grace and God's goodness. We did not deserve it, but he freely pours it on us and surrounds us with it. As a son, he crowns me. How can I forget that? Now notice uh, that as a saint, he satisfies me. Blessing 5, verse 5. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like uh, the eagle. As our gracious heavenly father, he gives his saints the good things of life. Doesn't always give us what we want but he always gives us what is best. Remember Romans 8 and 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. Those who rest in him and those who draw their strength from him will find that they're in a constant state of renewal and that their spiritual stamina will never fail. They will rise on wings like eagles. As a saint, he satisfies me. How can I forget that? Our penultimate blessing here today is as one who suffers. He intercedes for me. Verse 6, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all you know, the oppressed. The inference here, of course, is that God is at work for those who can do nothing to save themselves. And David goes on to mention Moses in verse 7. And it's way back in Exodus 2 and 3 that we read of God seeing the oppression of his people and hearing their cries for mercy at the hands of their slave drivers and then of God coming to help them. He interceded on their behalf. Of course, take that into the whole of Scripture and redemptive history, and we see Jesus interceding on our behalf. We remember Romans 5 and 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us and this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Lost in sin and no way out, oppressed by guilt, God reached down and saved us. And then in Hebrews 7.25, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus pleads our case before Almighty God. As one who suffers, he intercedes for me. How can I forget that? And lastly, blessing number seven. And I just want to summarize this by reminding us as a saved servant, he loves me. This shines through all that we have read and thought on so far, but it's highlighted in verse 17 for us. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's uh, children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. God loves those uh, who he has saved. He loves those who fear him and follow him. He loves those who remember him and rejoice in him. He remembers those he has created and chosen to be his Uh, own God's love is with me from everlasting to everlasting it's always there it doesn't go away he's always there he never forgets he always loves his own 
Friends, God never forgets us. So let's not forget him. Let's not forget how good he is, how great he is, how gracious he is, how generous he is in uncertain times. Do not forget the blessings of God. In these days when we are perhaps getting a little weary and worn out, frustrated and and fed up, let's not forget uh, the Lord. But let's use David's example here to stir ourselves to praise as we ponder the many blessings of God. And there are some great blessings here. And I'm sure if I asked you to write a a list of God's blessings in your life and send it to me, there would be so much more. And perhaps it's something to do today, actually, to ponder the blessings of God and to take some time just to do that, to praise him for them, to write them down so that you don't forget. And then maybe to send them to me or to someone else just to encourage them as well. In summary, when I think that he forgives all my sin, when I think of the help and healing I have received. Uh, When I think of the fact that I was once a slave to sin, but now I'm free from sin's bondage, sin's curse and sin's penalty. Uh, When I think of his grace and his goodness towards me, uh, when I think of how he has repeatedly lifted me from the jagged uh, rocks of affliction and pain and restored to me spiritual strength and victory, when I think of him interceding for me, stepping in to rescue me, and when I think of his love, his everlasting love. I just have to say, as the psalmist said, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you again for your incredible love your grace, your mercy shown to us. We thank you that you've chosen us, called us, you're changing us. We want to thank you that you've loved us. Uh, You've loved us from before time began and will love us into eternity, from everlasting to everlasting. You're God and from everlasting to everlasting, you love us and we just want to thank you and praise you for that. Would you forgive us for the times we forget? Would you forgive us for the times that we forget your blessings, we forget uh, your work in our life, all the things you have done and are doing. Uh, Lord, would you forgive us, we pray. Would you help us to count our blessings, to name them one by one, for it will surprise us what the Lord has done. Lord, help us today to take time to ponder, just as David did, to ponder your many blessings and to write them down, to think about them. And to thank and to praise you for them. Lord, we thank you that we have 10,000 reasons and so many more to to praise you today. Lord, may we be counting every blessing. May we be rejoicing in you. Even in these difficult days, Lord. Even in these days when we're getting frustrated and fed up, weary and worn out with this lockdown. Lord, help us not to look just at the situation, but help us to look to our God to remember your blessings and to rejoice in those because how you've blessed us in the past, you will bless us today and in the days to come and so much more beside because you promised never to leave us or forsake us and that your love is for us from everlasting to everlasting. And so Lord, we trust you, we depend upon you, we look to you, we rejoice in you today. Lord, help us to praise and to adore, to worship you for who you are. Lord, we just thank you And we praise you. And now we pray to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fall and with great joy to the only God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, count your blessings today. Rejoice in what God has done for you and uh, be amazed again at his incredible love uh, and provision uh, and presence with you. Uh, We're going to finish with a couple of songs that just remind us uh, to bless the Lord of my soul and uh, maybe a newer one from Rend Collective, Counting Every Blessing. Let's go out rejoicing today, knowing that God is with us, knowing that he works in our lives, knowing that he is for us and not against us, knowing that he uh, blesses us again and again and again. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Praise the Lord. Bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord be with you today.